I made a fun program with one of my students earlier today, and I thought I would share it with you. And the idea is that in a 3D space, cubes appear, are generated at the center, and then just fly off in random directions. So that one flies off, and then another one comes and flies off in some other direction, and then another one appears at the beginning and flies off, and so on. So let's look at how we might do this. Here is sort of a core of a processing Scala program. And you can see when I run it, it just makes a window that's got a black background. So that's our starting point. Um, what do we need to do to make these cubes? Well, first, I think we'll make a case class to store the information that each cube needs. So case class, and we'll call this case class leaving cube. And it's going to need to keep track of some things. So it has to know where the cube is. So we're going to need vars. Uh, these are going to be floats because that's what processing uses. And they're going to change because the thing moves. And we also need to randomly generate the amounts in pixels by which each cube will move along each of the three axes. In other words, uh, change in X, change in Y, change in Z for each frame of animation. So let's make a function called random delta. And we will use random next float and then multiply that by four and then subtract two. So this will give us real numbers between minus two and plus two. And we'll use that RD method to create these three vowels. So we'll have val delta x equals RD. Uh, here, I think we'll do it without that. And then same thing for y and z. So now we have these three vowels, and each has a random double, uh, sorry, a random float ranging from minus two and plus two. And we'll use these to move the cube. Okay, uh, what else? In the draw, let's create a new cube every second. So um, first we better set the frame rate so we know what that is. We'll set the frame rate to 30 frames a second. And then we can use the frame count variable. This starts at a zero or one, I forget which, and then just increases. If we use this remainder operator and say frame count, the remainder of dividing frame count by 30, and if that's equal to zero, uh, then we'll create a new cube. And how often is it, is it going to be equal to zero? Well, um, let's say it starts at one. The remainder of dividing one by 30 is what? One. And then two and all the way up to 29. And then remainder of dividing 30 by 30 is zero. So then this will happen. And what are we going to do? We're going to create a new cube. So how do we create an instance of a case class? just the name of the case class, like this. But we're going to have to remember it somehow. We'll have to keep track of these cubes. So let's do this. Let's create cubes, which is a vector of leaving cube. And a vector is a convenient collection type. Um, we can add to it efficiently, so we could generate these cubes very quickly. And now what we'll do is we will add the cube that we're creating to this vector of cubes. Let me just move that bottom window out of the way and scroll up. Okay, so we have cubes, so we say cubes colon plus equal leaving cube. So this will 
make a new instance of this case class and add it to the end of cubes, which is this vector of leaving cubes. Okay, so that takes care of generating the cubes. Now, how are we going to get the cubes to draw themselves? Let's add a draw method to leaving cube. And we'll do it like this. And um, it's going to call um, box. The edge length of the box is 50. To, to set the position of the box, we, use, we need to use transform. So we'll transform. And first, we'll move to the center of the screen from the top left. So we have the width variable divided by 2. And we have the height variable. We can divide that by 2. And we're not changing on the z-axis. So we have that, transform, translate. Translate is the transformation that we're doing. Um, so that would put it in the center. And I might just run this to show you that it is in the center as soon as we call draw. Um, here in, the, in um, the main classes draw method, we will do this. We'll say cubes for each call the draw method. This goes through the vector of cubes, and for each one, the underscore representing each one, we call the draw method. That should draw all the cubes. Now, I might have forgotten something, but let's just run and see what we get. OK, I've forgotten something. Oh, no, here. We've got it down here. So let's see. What did I forget? I forgot the fact that. We need to isolate these transformations using um, push matrix and pop matrix. Otherwise, they'll just keep accumulating, and each box will be pushed down to the right and uh, down and to the right by half the screen height and width. So let's see if this takes care of that. Okay, now it's down here. It's supposed to be in the center. So what? have I done wrong here? Width and height. Ah. Okay, here's what I did wrong. I had the, just kind of by habit, I put this translate in here, uh, forgetting that I'm going to have it up here. There we go. So now we have our single cube in the center and it's not moving. Actually, we're getting a new one each second. Um, they're just all drawn in the same place. Now let's make them move. Let's make a move method. What's going to happen here? How do you move it? What, uh, what do we do? What's going to change in the case class? Well, what controls the position? These three variables, x, y, and z. So we're going to, um, we're going to add to them these random numbers. So we're going to add to x the change in x. And to y, the change in y, and to z, the change in z. Uh, so let's do that. x plus equals delta x. Same thing for y and z. And also, now, here, we'd better take the x, y, and z values into consideration. So we're not going to draw at the center. We're going to draw at the center plus x and at the center plus y and on the z-axis in the middle plus z. Let's see what we get now. Okay, so something's still not quite right there. They're not moving. So what have we done wrong? Oh, we never called move, did we? Let's come down here in the draw. After we draw each cube, let's move each cube. Here we go. That seems to be working. It's a bunch of cubes. They're all moving away. And you can see their cubes. As they move away from the center, you start to see their perspective. Um, what do I want to do? I want, it to be, I want them to move uh, faster. I think that would be fun. And then let's add some color. So for the faster, can you figure out what to do for that? What is it that's 
controlling the speed of movement or the change in position along the axes. Well, that is this function here, the random delta function. So we could just uh, double these numbers. That would double. So we want a span of 8 from minus 4 to plus 4. Um, now, to do the colors, we're going to need to, and let's just assign the colors randomly. So I'm going to make another random producing function, this one called RC for random color. And this will produce next int 256. And if we look up next int, we can see it produces a number between 0 inclusive and, in this case, 256 exclusive, which means you don't ever get a 256. You get a 255 at the most. Um, now we'll create three new vowels that are used to provide the red, green, and blue uh, components of the color. So we'll say red equals RC, and then green, and then blue. I like the stuff to line up, so I'm doing that. Now, let's just set the stroke and fill color before we draw the box. Stroke, red, green, blue. Same thing for fill. Now, it should be faster and more colorful. Here we go. Uh, not fast enough, and I want the cubes to come out a little bit faster. Some of them are going kind of fast. Also, what if we drew the, what if we stroked the cubes with black or white? Maybe white, that might look nice. So we'll stroke the cubes always with white. Um, we'll just give a single number since it's on the gray scale. And to speed things up again, this can be a bigger number, and this number is always half of that bigger number. So how about um, 20 minus 10? And what else? I wanted to speed up the frequency at which the cubes are added. Where does that happen? That is this. So let's say maybe instead of once a second, well, one thing I could do is I could just double the frame rate. And now we'll get two a second. Ah. This is kind of fun. Let's watch this a while. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's good enough. Let me walk you through the code one more time. And I'll leave that running. OK, so here's a review. We've got our class, Leaving Cubes. That's the name of this program. It extends pAppLet, which is a processing class. We have our vector of leaving cubes uh, called cubes, which it keeps track of all these cubes. And then we have our case class called Leaving Cube, which represents one of these. And what do we have? Uh, we've got two functions in here, and we have nine variables or values. And um, six of the values don't change, because once we choose the speed and the color, they don't change. But the position changes. Here's the draw method of Leaving Cube. And it pushes and pops the matrix. That's to isolate the transformation so that they, it applies just to this particular cube and not the others. And then we, um, the origin in processing is the top left. So we need to shift that to the center and then move. So we shift to the center by, uh, on the x axis, we take the half of the width. We go over half of the width. And then we add whatever's in the x variable. So now that could be anywhere from minus 10 to plus 10. And it's something similar for the for the, the height, the y-axis. Then we, the stroke is the color on the outside. You see the white of the edges of the cubes. 
And the fill is the faces of the cubes. So that's done with the randomly chosen red, green, and blue color. The box 50, 50 is the length of each edge of the cube. And then in the move method, we just adjust these X, Y, and Z values. We could be making them smaller or bigger. It just depends on what was randomly chosen for DX, DY, and DZ. And settings gets called, settings and setup get called at the, at the beginning. This is just the size of the window and I made it 1080 so I could make this a 1080p video. This turns on 3D. This makes the cubes look smoother. And here in the draw we do background zero which makes the background black and then every 30 frames we make a new cube and we add it to the vector. Then every time we draw, we draw each cube and we move each cube. That's it.